There are over 12 trillion photos taken throughout history. A lot of them are normal such as selfies and Skype photos, but sometimes people take very disturbing photos. Sometimes it's accidental, but a lot of the time these scary photos are planned out, and some even become popular creepypastas, such as the Russian Sleep Experiment Monster, which is actually a spirit Halloween decoration. So in today's video, we will be answering the question, where did these images come from? Welcome back to another video, and today we will be talking about where did these images come from part 3. I don't know if I will make a part 4, I don't think this will be the finale, but the thing is, when it comes to the most popular and iconic horror photos, I pretty much covered all of them already, so I don't know if there will be a part 4, but who knows. And if you're ever in need for some fire clothing, make sure to go check out EarlDoesn'tExist.com using my link in the description below for some fire clothing. And also don't forget to check out my Twitter and especially my Instagram because I do want to start posting more over there. So go check those out and they will be linked in the description below. Oh, and I forgot to mention, this is a collab video with Jaden Salads. I've actually collabed with them in the past because I did appear in his most recent video and today I will be having him on this video since he also has a very popular series where he talks about the origins of liminal space images. So I had to have him on, especially since I have used them for information in the past. So go check him out and this will be a very fire video. The Russian Sleep Experiment Photos there are two photos associated with the Russian sleep experiment. One photo that shows four men in gas masks and one photo of a victim who was in the experiments. The Russian sleep experiment has to be one of the biggest creepypastas of all time. Just because many people believe that this story is true, but it is actually fake. And I'm not gonna lie to you guys, I just found out that the Russian sleep experiments were fake. This creepypasta gained massive popularity due to its highly believable storyline, which convinced a large audience of its plausibility. Unlike more well-known mainstream creepypastas like Jeff the Killer or Smile Dog, which are clearly fictional, the Russian Sleep Experiment's narrative appears more realistic, which heightened the credibility, and that's what makes it stand out from the other creepypastas. The story takes place in 1947 at a secret Soviet testing facility. In an experiment, five prisoners are exposed to a gas to keep them awake for 30 days, where they became increasingly disturbed, with one even mutilating himself and others, leading to horrific acts of self-mutilation, cannibalism, and violence. The subjects gain superhuman abilities, but eventually succumb to death of madness. When researchers try to stop the experiment, chaos ensues, and it is revealed that the subjects represent an inherent evil within the human mind. This is only a brief summary, as the full story is extremely long. But where did these Russian sleep experiment photos come from? Well, let's start off with the four men in gas masks. I decided to copy paste the photo into Tinai, which is a more accurate reverse image searcher, and it can even tell me the earliest date that the photo was posted to the web. When I dragged the photo into Tinai, the earliest photo of the four men in gas masks was posted on March 8th, 2008 as an Amazon listing. When you click on the Amazon link, it takes you to an Amazon page saying, sorry, we couldn't find this page. However, when you're on Tinai, the photo looks a bit different. That's because there's a picture frame around the photo. So the Amazon listing was most likely selling picture frames and Amazon decided to use the four men in gas masks as a stock image, which would be a very strange photo to use as a stock photo to sell picture frames. Like I said the first time that the internet saw this image was back in 2008, but considering that the photo looks old, that means that the origins of the image dates back further back before the internet was even a thing. Since this seems to be a photo from the war, I decided to go through other early links of the photos and I found a good lead. I found a website called Granger and they posted the photo to their site in 2013 with the caption World War I Gas Warfare. In the description they said, American soldiers demonstrating the different types of gas masks worn by the US, British, French, and German troops. So this is a World War I photo but I still can't pinpoint an exact date when this photo was taken. But at least we know the time period of this photo. And for the moment you've been waiting for, where did this image come from? 
for the longest, I thought this was a real photo of a mummified corpse, but it's actually a spirit Halloween decoration. The Halloween decoration is called Spasm. Spasm was an animatronic sold by Spirit Halloween for the 2005 through 2008 Halloween seasons. It resembled a grinning man in a straight jacket who was foaming at the mouth and sitting on the ground. When activated, the body violently shakes while groaning could be heard. In 2009 to 2015, Spasm would now only be sold online, and this animatronic was made by Morbid Enterprises. So somebody who owned the Spasm animatronic simply took a photo of it and edited it. The first time that the internet saw the edited photo was on March 28th of 2013, which was posted to a photo sharing site called TC Magazine, and they have a section called Photo Dump, where people just shitpost and one of those photos is the Russian sleep experiment mummy guy. It's so funny to me how this very popular horror image that so many people believe that it's real is simply a Halloween decoration from Spirit Halloween. Who would have known? The Cooper Family Photo This is a very well-known cursed image that first surfaced on the web in 2009. The story goes that in the 1950s, the Cooper family bought an old home. The father would then take this photo of the two kids with their mom and grandma. Afterwards, when they got the photo developed, they would discover the body falling out on the left. Obviously, this was rather unsettling and quite creepy and mysterious, as there wasn't actually a falling body when they took the photo. From what I just told you, that seems to be the most commonly associated story for this picture. But is the photo even real? The image, in my opinion, is most likely fake, but we're still not entirely sure if that's the case. On Reddit, many people tried to explain this photo and a Reddit user would go on to say this. So, I looked into it, and allegedly the family took the picture, and took the film to get it developed. Apparently, one of the guys developing the film noticed how the family is off to the right, and there was just a big empty space on the left. So he threw a negative from another photo onto the film and then developed it as a prank. The falling body is actually just a cutout of someone from another image placed on top of this one. When the family got the developed photo, they immediately took it as evidence of the paranormal instead of realizing it was just a joke. I can't really blame them because it looks awfully spooky, but knowing that it was most likely a joke done by some kid developing photos makes a lot more sense. And it was pretty common at the time for people to mess with film or even do double exposures like this one as a sort of novelty ghost item. The family did not know they were posing for a ghost photo, unlike this guy, who clearly paid to have a double exposure done to replicate a translucent ghost in the room with him. Nevertheless, it's most likely that this wasn't a ghost, just a joke. This theory seems rather plausible because back in the day when cameras were fairly new, people would do double exposure photos to make it seem like there's a ghost in the picture. Anyway, one of the alleged boys from the Cooper family picture eventually spoke out and had this to say. When my older brother sent me this link, I was floored. We are the two boys in the picture. Well, we were back in 1959. I have many pictures like this one, but not this one. My mother had a habit of throwing away pictures that she didn't like. Eventually, the ones she kept were passed along to me. What annoys me is that somebody got a hold of a family photograph. The story is almost entirely fiction. Our last name is Copper, not Cooper. Does anyone know who did this? However, we don't know if this is the real boy from the photo, as anyone can pass around misinformation and poses anybody on the internet. Clown with an axe. This is an iconic cursed image that has been on the internet for many years now. It shows a tall clown walking down to the basement with an axe, approaching a family. So, where did this photo come from? Well, this was a photo created by a famous American photographer, Rosalind Fox Solomon. The photo of the clown is a piece of art called Halloween, which was taken in 1977. However, the clown was never holding an axe, but instead holding some type of black stick. Somebody just took Rosalind's photo and added an axe to make the image more creepy. In most of Rosalind's art, she includes creepy masks and dolls. She would even explain why she uses them in her photos by saying, I like the symbolisms and metaphors that they represent. She even gave context behind her Halloween photo and stated that the hovering giant clown may represent a political figure. A long, bare arm threatens the two children and their parents are disconnected. Her photos are very strange, but honestly, I dig her work.
Four children for sale. This photo pops up from time to time on meme pages and other places on the internet. For many people when they first see this picture, the first thing that would pop into their mind is that this is some sort of satirical joke because what parent would actually sell their children, especially in this type of way? Well, unfortunately, this photograph wasn't a joke and a mother was actually attempting to sell her own children. This is a photo from 1948, showing four children up for sale as their family in Chicago, Illinois struggled with poverty. Although there were claims that the mother had been paid to stage the picture, the reality of it was she was actually trying to sell her children. And unfortunately enough, all four kids in the photo, plus the baby she was carrying, were eventually sold to different families within two years. Ray Ann and her brother Milton ended up being sold for just two dollars to an abusive family. They went on to work long hours in fields and were even confined in a barn. Milton even remembers being called a slave from his quote unquote new father. The other children, Lana and Sue Ellen, found new homes through adoption, so they didn't have to work and live in such harsh conditions like their other siblings. The Monroe House. This liminal image of a house first popped up in a YouTube video called Strangely Familiar Places with Unnerving Music. The video was posted on April 15th, 2020, which was the time period where dream core and liminal space images were starting to become more mainstream. In fact, in the video, it also features other very popular liminal space images, but the one I want to talk about is this one right here, a very creepy looking house in the dark. It is also the thumbnail of the video. Believe it or not, this house is somewhat famous because this is the Monroe House, which is haunted. This house from the 1860s was featured in a show called Paranormal Lockdown in which in a 2018 episode, they do a ghost investigation where they find human bones in the house basement, which were unidentified. The Monroe House is located in Hartford City, Indiana. The origins of the image were found by the one and only Jaden Salads, which he covered in his Finding the Locations of Liminal Spaces Part 3 video, which I am featured in that video. So go watch that video after this one if you want to know the origins of other liminal space images. Premises on Scov. If you're familiar with who I am or the videos I make on my channel, then you'd know that I'm a pretty big fan of liminal spaces and their real life locations. For this entry in particular, it's of a very surreal and strange looking liminal space. Aside from the creepy lighting and vibrant colored walls, the main attraction here is the abundance of randomly placed windows and winding staircases. I'm usually pretty good at finding where these images were taken from, but I would have had a hard time if it wasn't for the YouTuber Shuki, covering this one in particular. In his nearly three-year-old video covering the origins and history of this unsettling building, he gave it the name Premises on Skov. This room ended up being a picture used for a website that lists Russian properties for sale. For just up to a hundred thousand US dollars, you could purchase this very unique five-story cafe club. If I ever get a big sponsorship in the future, I know where my money's going. Ghost Girl GIF This next one isn't actually a photo, but instead a very popular horror GIF. Hell, you probably didn't even know that it was a GIF, and you most likely saw one of these two images. In the GIF, you see a ghost girl in night vision mode, where she turns around and her eyes and mouth open up wide. I always thought to myself, who made this GIF? Since when I was at sleepovers 10 plus years ago, me and my friends would watch scary compilation videos on YouTube and in every compilation, it would always include this ghost girl. Well, this is actually a scene from a 2011 movie titled Grave Encounters. This particular scene pops up in the movie at the 1 hour 2 minute and 10 second mark. Currently, you could watch this movie for free here on YouTube. And from the reviews I heard, this horror movie is pretty solid. The Smiley Face This simple yet equally unsettling scary face has been floating around the internet for quite some time now. The eyes for this face are two plain white dots, but the mouth is used from images like Smile Dog and different variations of Jeff the Killer. This mouth actually dates back far before this face was ever created, but the origins are still unknown. There's been different attempts to find the original, unedited mouth, but nothing has ever been truly confirmed. What is confirmed though, is where this creepy smiley face is actually from. The 2012 indie horror game called SCP 087B is where this face made its debut. The game is centered around a variety of SCP characters, and this happened to be the model created for the SCP 087 monster. While the mouth in this image may not have a definitive answer for how or where it was made, we do know where this face came from. Girl in the Mirror For the longest time, I've seen these two images of a girl looking into a mirror. But when the girl looks at the camera, the girl's reflection is still facing her. These two photos are actually screenshots from a viral OG YouTube video 
that was posted on January 3rd, 2008 on the NCook1234 YouTube channel. The video is titled, Creepy Grudge Ghost Girl in the Mirror, and the video has hit over 110 million views. If you look through the user's other videos, you can see that they make creepy edited ghost videos. Which by the way, these videos are edited extremely well for its time, and they still hold up very well. I know this isn't considered an image, but instead a screenshot from a very popular YouTube video, but for some reason, I have never seen the video until now. I am only familiar with the screenshots. Which is surprising to me because I thought I had seen every OG viral YouTube video, but it turns out that I missed this one back in the day. Did you guys know that there was a video associated with these images? Because I didn't. Mickey Mouse Basement Photo If you were on the internet in the mid to late 2010s, then you were probably familiar with the cursed images trend. From disturbing pictures of beans in places that beans shouldn't be in, to thousands of unexplainable low quality pictures, you probably came across this one in particular. It's of a person in a Mickey Mouse costume creeping out of the corner in what seems to be an abandoned basement. For many people, this photo would probably trigger some sort of fight or flight and make this weird scenario seem much worse and much darker than what it actually is. Despite all the searching I I did, I came up short on finding this photo's direct origin, but there are conclusions that we can make on our own. In all reality, this photo was probably taken by a group of friends just to either creep out the internet or just to have a funny photo uploaded online. As disappointing as it is to not have a conclusive answer for some of these creepy pictures, it's not necessarily a bad thing. For many of these images, it's actually part of the mystery aspect that gives us that creepy feeling. If we knew the origins to all the creepy pictures in the world, then I think creepy pictures wouldn't be as… creepy? I think the mystery really adds a lot to it and we may not even realize it. Now don't get me wrong, I like to know the origins and lore of things on the internet, but sometimes we have to just accept that we may never know who took a photo or where a photo was ever taken. And that's okay. Anyway, go subscribe to Morbid for Fun if you haven't already, and go shop at EarlDoesn'tExist.com. Killer Clown this is a very infamous killer clown photo that I bet you guys have seen so many times by now. This photo shows a clown with balloons on a swing. If you look at the costume, you can tell that this is a Pennywise the Dancing Clown costume. However, the mask isn't a Pennywise mask, but instead a different clown mask, and the mask is slightly edited to make the photo scarier. I remember seeing this photo so many times during the 2016 Killer Clown craze. So the origins of this image is most likely from 2016. So I decided to find a few articles from 2016 that have used this photo. And I found an article from SB Sun that dates back to October 7th, 2016, where they used this clown photo. Underneath it, there was a caption saying, an Instagram account called We Are Coming to Cali that features this picture and other of creepy clowns and Los Angeles area communities is sparking concern among some residents and local law enforcement. Image from Instagram. And with this information, I thought I had found the origins of the image. An Instagram account called We Are Coming to Cali posted the photo. Well, there's a small problem. The Instagram account is long gone. And plus, I doubt that SB Sun got the photo from the original source. After all, this photo is being used in so many articles, so SB Sun most likely got the photo from a random Instagram page. And that said, Instagram page most likely got the image from somewhere else. After a while of searching, I finally decided to throw the image into Tinai, which like I said earlier, is a more accurate reverse image tool. And it turns out that I was wrong about something. This image did not come from the killer clown craze of 2016 because Tinai found the earliest image that was posted to the web and that was one photo that was posted on October 13, 2014. This photo dates back before the killer clown craze of 2016. When I click on the link to go to the first source, the website is unavailable and it is not archived in the Wayback Machine. I was so confused and frustrated that I couldn't find the origins of the image, so I almost gave up on it. I wasn't gonna add this photo to this video, but then I remembered that Tinai also gives me other early dates as well. Sure, it may not be the earliest date, but I still decided to go through the other links to see if the websites are still active or if archives exist. Then I found this link with the clown photo. The photo dates back to October 17, 2014, four days after when the image first surfaced on the web. The link took me to Acclaim magazine, where I finally got some context behind the photo. 
The headline reads, Clown terrorized the streets of California town. In the article, it also reads this, Apparently, it all began with one guy and an Instagram account. But if Batman taught us anything, it's that copycats are inevitable, with more clowns popping up all over town and beyond. It's these copycats, however, that have seen Wasco Clown's ridiculous level of creepiness. I'm never leaving the house again at night. Hmm, Wasco Clown. Okay, that's a brand new lead. So then I decided to Google the Wasco Clown, where I then found more photos of Wasco Clown. There's one photo in front of the Wasco Bakersfield sign, which is where he got the name Wasco from. He named himself after a town in Bakersfield, California. There's another photo of him on a playground rocket ship in front of insurance buildings, and of course the infamous photo of Wasco Clown on the swing. So we all know about the killer clown craze of 2016. How it was a problem nationwide, but apparently in 2014 there was another killer clown craze. But instead of it being nationwide, it was only locally in California, mainly in Bakersfield, California. The Wasco clown photos were taken by a husband and wife team and posted to an Instagram account as part of a year-long art project. They didn't expect their photos to go viral and once locals of the town started to see the photos, they became terrified since they didn't know the context behind these photos. What started as an art project has spawned the armed clown copycats, including the arrested teenager who claimed to be copying the Wasco clown. It is unknown why this married couple decided to do a clown photography project, but when these images got viral, the couple decided to make merch and donate the money to autism and pediatric cancer research. Who knew that there was positivity within the Wasco clown photos? And that is the end of where do these images come from part 3. Like I said in the beginning of this video, I don't know if I will be making a part 4 just because I kind of already covered every mainstream horror photo and talked about their origins and to the ones that I haven't talked about yet. Well, that's because I couldn't find the origins of them and they haven't yet been discovered. So who knows if I will be making a part 4. Big shout out to Jid and Salads for hopping on this video with me. And if you want to see our other collab, make sure to go to his YouTube channel and watch his most recent video. It's a fire video. Don't forget to shop at EarlDoesn'tExist.com using my link in the description below because it does support me a lot. And of course, don't forget to check me out on Twitter and Instagram, which I am going to try to be more active on. Thank you for all the crazy support and I'll see you guys in my next video. See you guys.